What is going on guys? This is Daniel. And while watching Eurobasket, one game stood out to me in particular, and it was Germany versus Italy. It was because this game was a defensive grind, and there were several lessons to be taken away from this game defensively. So I'm going to share three lessons, how to defend the Spain pick and roll, when it's appropriate to help one pass away, and hiding to defend the post-entry pass. Let's get to it. Defending the Spain pick and roll is not easy. For those of you that aren't familiar with the Spain pick and roll, here's a bit of background. It became popular in the NBA last season, and what it is is a pick and roll on top, and then the screener receives a back screen. This confuses defenses, and on this play, Miles Turner gets stuck on the screen, and that leads to a dunk for the rolling big. The person who sets the back screen is always a shooter, and it's very tough to defend, as once the back screener sets the screen, he pops to the top. That's what Ryan Anderson does here, and he hits the three. It's a tough play to defend, but Germany was able to shut Italy down when they ran it. And the first part is identifying that it's coming, and once Germany did that, they had a plan. So the guy guarding the shooter who's setting the back screen switched on to the point guard. And Schroeder who was guarding the point guard switches on to the back screener popping out top. This allows the defensive big man to not worry about the ball and stick with his man, the rolling big, to not give up the roll. And here, they contain it well and force a tough shot. This is not a regular ball screen switch. Switching the pick and roll regularly would have the big man switching on to the guard and Schroeder switching on to the big man. And the issue here is now you have two big mismatches. The strategy that Germany employs has the wing switching on to the guard so there aren't any major mismatches. And again, they force a really tough shot. Germany's communication was excellent, and it has to be for a defensive strategy like this. And again, they contain the Spain pick and roll, nicely executing the switch, though here, Schroeder closes out terribly to Marco Bellinelli, giving up the open three. Bellinelli tried an interesting counter to the way Germany was defending the Spain pick and roll, and it was after he sets the back screen, he cuts back door as the guard switching on to him is on the high side, and here he's actually open, but the pass isn't made, and Germany forces the miss, but good stuff from Bellinelli. On one occasion, Germany ran the Spain pick and roll versus Italy, and you can see the difference in the defense. So there you see the Spain pick and roll, you have the back screen, and Italy does not execute the same switch Germany does. They allow penetration, and then they help one pass away off a shooter in the corner, a no-no, giving up the three. Unlike Germany, they were unprepared to defend this play. Now let's talk about when it's appropriate to help one pass away. And typically, helping one pass away is not a good thing, as you bring help from the weak side, not one pass away. But there are certain situations where it's beneficial for the defense to help one pass away. On this play, the guard helps one pass away on top, and here there are three reasons why it was a good idea. The first reason is that the spacing between the ball handler and the guard on top isn't good. So the distance to close out on the guard on top isn't far. The second reason is that it's more of a stunt. The guard isn't fully committing to the ball, just stunting with the intention of getting back to his man. And the third reason is that Daniel Hackett, the guard on top, is a mediocre three-point shooter. So this was good defense. Watching this play again, it's clear the stunt had a positive effect. The defender was able to prevent the guard from coming off the screen and getting to the middle, forcing the pass. Here it's Bellinelli who jabs at the ball, but then quickly gets back to his man and in the passing lane, and he's rewarded with the steal. Just watch Bellinelli again, how he catches Schroeder off guard with his hard stunt, and then gets in the passing lane. This next case of helping one pass away is a classic case of the ball handler and stretch big just being too close together, the spacing isn't great, allowing the defensive big man to get in the way and then recover to his man and Italy gets a nice stop here.
There are certain situations where the on-ball defender is just completely beat toward the middle. That's what happens here as the defender falls behind the play, so the defensive guard guarding the guard on top helps one pass away, and he doesn't just stun, he commits. And that leaves the guard open, but notice how an Italian defender will rotate up to take away that three, switch on to the guard, and force a tough shot. This is a great example of covering for each other on defense. Again, a drive toward the middle happens, and this time, a defensive center who's guarding a stretch big comes from the top to protect the basket, and while this may give up a kickout three, the idea is just don't give up layups. And also, even if the kickout pass was made, they could rotate to the top and to the corner to do their best to prevent an open three. Here, the ball handler forces up a shot inside anyways. Germany defended the Spain pick and roll well, and Italy did a nice job of helping one pass away. And here the same situation happens. The defensive center comes from the top to protect the basket, even if that gives up an open three, and this time Schroeder turns it over. So, usually it's appropriate to help one pass away if it's off a poor shooter, if it's a short distance, if it's more of a stunt or a jab at the ball than fully stopping the ball, and to help a teammate on a middle drive to prevent an easy shot at the basket. It should be noted, there are counters to beat helping one pass away, Germany just didn't do a good job of utilizing them. Moving on to hiding to defend the post entry pass. This is a simple one. The post defender will get behind the post player and he'll fight to take away the pass to the outside hand. This time, the defender does a nice job as the pass isn't even made and when the ball is passed on top, the defender gets back in the inside position to prevent the high-low pass. This is less aggressive than fronting the post while still overplaying the pass to the outside. And you may be thinking, well why don't they just throw it to the inside? And the first reason is it's not so much of an overplay where that's an easy pass. And the second reason is, especially when offenses are passing it into the post for the post player to pass, the post player is really looking for the ball on his outside hand. And here the defender makes the post player work and catch it farther than he'd like. Just by hiding and making that post-entry pass more difficult, it disrupts the flow of the offense. In the NBA, Draymond Green is by far the best at this. Here, defending Zach Randolph in the post, he overplays, takes away the pass to the outside, and ends up getting the deflection and the steal. Well, there you have it guys, nothing like a defensive video. And specifically next season, I'll be interested in seeing if teams defend the Spain pick and roll differently and if they use the switching strategy that Germany used. Also, I now have an Instagram. Shout out to my marketing intern Keith for getting things going and you can follow me at I am Coach Daniel. Also, one more thing, Slovenia just won the Eurobasket Championship and I'll do my best to get out a Slovenia video, but no guarantees. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.